Welcome back to those people for whom this video is their second exposure to the thinking and philosophies of Jeff Thompson and Peter Constantine on how to deal with violent confrontations. In the first pavement arena, we touched on a number of areas, new probably to some of you, but hopefully highly effective, revealing, and most importantly, refreshingly honest. It would be very easy for the two authors to fill these tapes with a wide variety of complicated and seemingly effective techniques in order to perpetuate the myth about real self-defense that has been taught for years by many people in the martial arts who are unable to divorce their art and sport from the reality of violent confrontations. They teach in the dojo as they think it happens in the street. Think, regrettably, being the operative word. In this tape, we will expand on some 15 principles which make up the program for a comprehensive self-protection package. Those instructors who teach only the physical techniques teach a hollow shell. In this tape, we will look at the very complex area of threat awareness, evaluation, and avoidance. 90% of street attacks would be avoidable if only the victims were more switched on. Most criminal acts are opportunist, but in street muggings and attacks, it is the victim who provides that opportunity on a plate. A booby trap on a bomb is deemed to be victim operated, and so it is in the street. A mugging is victim operated. By demeanor, manner, attitude, and body language, a person conveys to a mugger only one image, victim. We will be looking in depth at fear and fear control. Fear is the one single factor that bonds every self-defense scenario, be it a mugging, attempted rape, or simple act of gratuitous violence. Yet it is equally the most overlooked aspect in the majority of books and tapes on self-defense. This only serves to clearly illustrate that those who don't teach it haven't been there to feel it. The viewer who is watching and hoping for a myriad of techniques that will meet and solve every possible eventuality is missing the point. At the core of good self-protection, one or two powerful techniques delivered from the philosophy of be first, be fast, and be ferocious are all you should need. If you then build outward from that, more can, with care, be added to the technique side to satisfy the conditions of engagement, such as kicking, grappling, and varying the punches. Even blocking on rare occasions has a part to play. Confidence is the key to winning and having total belief in only one favorable outcome. That confidence must be based on simplicity of approach. Complexity, multiple choice and decision making have no part to play in violent confrontations. Violence is now off the reservation. It can happen anywhere, to any member of class or society at any time. Throw the syllabus away and start again.